Let's talk about lightmaps and backing next. The first thing I want to do is to go to my viewport options and change my screen percentage to 200, just to get a better anti-aliasing in my viewport. Note that I can preview the lightmap resolution of every actor in the scene prior to baking. To do that, we'll use the optimization view modes and select the lightmap density. The different colors represent the size of the lightmap resolution for each object. Blue means we have a smaller texture size for that object, green is medium size, and red represents a higher density lightmap size. Let's start with the size of the lightmaps for the walls. Since they are large flat surfaces, I want them to have the maximum quality resolution. I will select the object and go to the details scroll down, and in the lighting tab, I will enable overridden lightmap resolution. Ok, let's first enter 1024. As you can see, it becomes orange, but I can still see the checker box on it, which represents the pixels of the lightmap. So I will enter 4096 to get the maximum size for that lightmap, and thus the maximum quality. Now, let's do the same with the curtains. I'll select both curtains and override the lightmap for both objects at the same time. And now, I'll do the same for the rest of the objects in my scene. I'm going to speed up the video here, so you don't have to watch me go through each object. An important thing to note here is that the larger the lightmap resolution is, the slower the baking process will be. The reason I'm making the lightmaps larger is that I want to get the best possible bake quality. Once I do the test baking, I'll have a better idea if my lightmaps are large enough for the objects in my scene. Next, I need to select my lights in the scene, and in the options, I will enable Set for Light Back. This way, I can set them to be static, which means they will not cast dynamic lighting, and they will be affecting only the light maps. Now, I want to do a test back to make sure that I don't have any flipped geometry, and to check the resolution of the light maps for the objects in my scene, like I said earlier. To do so, I'll go to the V-Ray Back button, and select Settings. Here, you can see that I have light baking quality set to zero. The zero quality setting will start the progressive sampling of my light maps and use low settings for baking. It also denoises the light map once it's baked and moves onto the next light map atlas. This preset will give us faster bakes, but it will compromise the light quality in the process. Note that when I use the preview setting, I can always press the stop button on the render window and then and it will stop the rendering, it will denoise the current result, and it will move on to the next light map atlas. But in this example, I'll just leave V-Ray to render my maps. Next, let's talk about the light map atlas resolution. This will determine the size of the light bake atlases. For example, V-Ray will automatically determine how many objects can be combined in one bigger atlas. Baking with larger atlases is faster, but it uses more computer memory and vice versa. Before I start the bake, let's go to the V-Ray settings, and I want quickly to show you the distributed rendering feature. Here, I can add other rendering machines to speed up the process of baking. The Use Local Host checkbox will allow us to include or exclude our workstation from the baking process. Note that the distributed rendering can be used for the IPR as well. Ok, let's start the bake, and then we'll continue once it's done. Let's talk about some finishing touches next. The preview baking finished for 2 hours and 41 minutes on my machine, only using my RTX 2080 Ti graphics card. Since light baking is a time consuming process, I would always recommend doing a test bake first. In a moment, I'll talk a little bit more about why this is important. Let me first go to view mode and disable the game settings. Then, I'll enter an exposure value of 0, so I can see the darker parts as well. Now, let's inspect our light maps in the scene. Since this is only a preview bake, I'm aware that this is not the final quality that I'll get from my light maps, but it allows me to go through my scene and assess what objects will need a higher light map resolution. First, I want to address why my trees outside are dark and how to fix them. Since my trees are V-Ray proxy meshes, 
they did not get included into the baking, which is why they appear dark. I can fix that by adding a new light into the viewport. And changing the lighting channel from 0 to 1. I'll do the same for all of my trees. Note that we need to do that after we bake our light maps. Otherwise, the trees will not be included into the shadows once we start the baking with V-Ray. Now, I can play with the light intensity to light the trees. Once I'm happy with that, I'll change the light map resolution of some of the objects in my scene, since they can use a little bit of higher light map resolution. Note that once I change the light map size, they will appear dark. This only means that they no longer are using the light map that I've baked using the preview preset. Alright, I'm happy with the changes, so now it's time to move on to our final light map baking. I recommend using at least a medium or high preset for that. With the medium preset, the baking will take 13 hours and 15 minutes, using only my RTX 2080 Ti to bake the light maps. Naturally, the high quality preset will take a lot more time. I recommend using the medium setting most of the time, and switching to high only if you see some problems with your light maps. Alright. Now it's time to bake my final light maps. If you want to speed up your baking, you can always include multiple graphics cards or CPUs on your machine. And don't forget, you can use distributed rendering as well. Okay, let's take a better look at my final light map bake. I will fly through the scene and take a closer look at my final light maps. Keep in mind that V-Ray always denoises the light maps once they're baked. This way, we can always get noise-free textures resulting in even higher quality. It's important to know that every time you change your light map's resolution, V-Ray will automatically find a space in your atlases for your light maps, by rearranging them automatically or creating a new atlas for it if the resolution is too large. In the near future, you will be able to export your light maps baked with V-Ray from Unreal and even edit them in external applications. But keep in mind that they will be 32-bit floating-point textures. Another awesome feature that we've added in V-Ray for Unreal is the ability to bake individual objects. This can be helpful if you need to do some tweaks on the geometry or change the light map resolution of certain objects, for example, and not have to bake the whole scene all over again. But we will cover that in a separate video.